Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna do some depotting, which is something I started to enjoy. Um, so, I told you in my last video that I've been depotting stuff, and my most recent depotting efforts was last night. I couldn't sleep. So, I decided to depot this, the Nubian by Juvia's Place. And I kind of got another method for depotting this stuff. I didn't feel like taking apart the whole thing, like separating this part from this. So I'll show you how I left this packaging mostly intact. Um, not like it matters. Um, but if you don't feel like pulling all this stuff apart, there's kind of a lazy way to go about it. And the candidate for being depotted, like this was, is my Nubian 2 by Juvia's Place. I really love this palette and I love the color story of it, but I don't get to use it very often because it's honestly so big that I don't want to travel with it and I refuse to travel with it. So you'll notice I've taken out I've depotted two shades um, with reasonable success and I tried to de depot Kenya. I cracked it using just a conventional depotting method. So anyway, I want to get the rest of these out and get them into a Z palette or a magnetic palette. Um, here are the shades. These right here are the ones that I depotted from the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Those 10 shades I depotted from the Nubian over here. So I already have somewhere that I can put these shades. I bought this magnetic palette from Juvia's Place earlier, uh, like early in the summer around the time before I went on my no buy and I have all these large pans from crown brushes. So my intention is to get these further organized and I kind of want to debrand my makeup collection and look at it more with just colors instead of always looking at it with um, an eye for brands. So anyway, <laughs> let's get started on this depotting journey. Okay, so we've got some better light in here. Let me just get this random stuff off my table. We've got some better light. Um, I've had relative um, success using this method. I only did it once on this. Now, I did end up with this cracked shadow, but when it came out of the palette, it wasn't cracked. So I believe that I cracked it when I was trying to get the sticky, the glue off the back. Um, so that's one word of caution is to try to be a little gentle and I'll show how I repress those shadows as well. But for now, let me talk about the tools that you're going to need. So I used this pair of scissors they're by Fiskars very very sharp um, which is helpful and I also use this palette knife um, one side is rounded the other side has sort of a it comes to a point but it's also like slightly angled which helps too so getting into getting this out of its housing, um, a lot of people separate here and you can certainly do that, separating it at this seam right here and pulling the whole thing apart. But for me, what I wanna do is I wanna get to that third layer of cardboard here, which is wrapped in paper that you can't see. And pull it apart from there. So I take the scissors and 
I try to guess about where that place is at. Yeah, see it's right there. Start slicing that open. I'm gonna do it on the bottom three sides, so this side as well. And then one side. So from there, I'm gonna take this rounded side of the palette knife. And since I cracked this shadow, I'm gonna start trying to get that one out first. And what I do is I take the palette, the knife part, I wedge it where I cut the palette open already and I start turning, lifting it up and just going along this edge and lifting it up. Kind of want to be gentle here because you can still crack these shadows but you'll start to see what's going on in here which is that I got right to the layer where the um, shadows are at. And then I'm going to run my finger along here try to start that off or you can use the knife that's probably what I'll do. I'm going to slide this knife in here, lift away even more of this. Just slowly go under that layer of cardboard. And actually I'm going to cut this top layer. Now we're going to work it around this way, wedge that knife under there to get between all these rows. So we got, what is that, Nefertiti out of there. So as you can see with this method, all you are left with, let me make sure this is in focus. So since it's, these mats are really delicate, I'm going to take this flat end of the knife. I don't want to agitate it with this curved edge of the knife. Just get the knife under there. Thank you. 
All right, so there we go. This whole thing got depotted in real time. So it took me 10, about 10 minutes, 18 seconds to depot this and I didn't have to peel off this layer here. It's still intact if you want the artwork. Um, and the shade names are still intact, that base plate. So it doesn't have to be like a messy um, or tedious process taking this whole thing apart. It can be pretty simple, I guess, and with minimal tools. You just, excuse me, you're just using a palette knife and a sharp pair of scissors. Um, so since I had shadows that um, kind of bit the dust, because of my brute force what I'm gonna do is show you how to um, repress those I'll be back in a second because I'm gonna peel off the backs of these and show you how to put on the metal sticker it's not like it really it's something that needs to be explained anyway I'm gonna stop talking I'll be right back I have this extra large Z palette and I'm sure they will all fit in here. So Alright, so the Z palette will fit, it'll fit, fit 5 across and 3 down, so that's 15 for the extra large. Um, but I'm just relieved that I got them out of the palette where I can now use these more readily because I use a uh, magnetic palette for day to day use and I can rotate shades in and out and just be able to switch up my collection more often. So for now, that's how they're gonna go. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to show how I repress um, shadows. What, one thing I'm not gonna try to do is repress this, like fix it while it's in the pan. It looks like it's about to come out. So I'm just going to, yeah, it's just crumbling out. And I know if I really tapped it, yeah, there we go. The whole thing comes out. So with this pan, I have the choice of either keeping this pan, which it has no real use. It's, I believe, aluminum. Um, I have my own. 37 millimeter pans. I'll show you. I bought them on Amazon. So I have these. Okay. These are already magnetized. So I see no reason for me to continue to use this pan when this one, the ones that I bought, are already magnetized. I don't have to put a magnet on them. So I'm going to repan this so I don't have to worry about getting the glue off of that either. So the first step is to get some of this mess together. Luckily it cracked all over itself so what I'm gonna do is just chop all this up kind of as fine as I can possibly get it. All right, now that I've got that up to a pretty fine powder. I, hmm. I'm going to take that pan, hold this paper up, 
carefully, hopefully. And pour it. Oh dear. This is a mess. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah! Okay. So what we're not going to do is pour all that <laughs> into the pan at once because there's just no room. So I'm going to go bit by bit. I have my 91% um, rubbing alcohol. I had a dropper, I don't know where it's at and I'm too lazy to go and find it. So all I do is pour a little bit of the alcohol into the top. And I'm gonna try to evenly distribute this powder because I just need it to condense down so I can get the rest of the powder in this. Okay, I'm gonna try to even that out with this knife. Uh, I'm, this is a messy business, so I would suggest you be a little bit better prepared for the mess than what I am right now. Okay, just pressing that down. I'm gonna get some more alcohol. Oh shoot. Of course I got some of this eyeshadow on the top. Okay, and I'm gonna go through the same process of kind of dousing it down with the alcohol so it condenses. Because I need the rest of that to go in here. Okay, so again, it's the consistency of very wet dirt or mud. That's how it looks. I'm going to try to get the rest of this in. the knife that's nice and level for now so what I'm gonna do is just set it aside somewhere I'm gonna set this ooh, here I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry out a little bit and maybe in about an hour 30 minutes when some of that alcohol evaporates I'm going to press it with paper towel then and I'm going to repress this little guy as well. I'm not going to do that on camera because you've already seen how it is. <sighs> Sorry, cat. Um, I'm not going to show you how I redo. Well, I could show you because I actually just decided right now that I'm going to put it in this pan, which is magnetized, instead of putting it back into this pan, which is not magnetized. So I'm going to repan it so I will be right back all right so repanning and fixing is the same as trying to um just fix a crack shadow I don't know if you necessarily have to use that process of crushing it in order to fix a crack shadow however with the Juvia's Place one that is the only way I found to um adequately fix them 
So there's some leftover in this pan. I'm gonna break that out. Okay, and because I hate these flimsy aluminum pans, I'm gonna take the, the sticky part off. There we go. I'm not gonna discard it. Um, the same way I'm not gonna discard, well, I don't need this pan because I've got those. But I am not, I'm not gonna use this um, aluminum pan. But I might save this one I don't know, I just really hate these pans. They're not magnetic, they're really cheap, and I just don't like them. Anyway, we're gonna go through the process of crushing this pigment about as fine as you can. All right, and since I'm repanning this into a bigger pan, it should be a little bit more simple. So for this, I'm actually gonna start out by putting a little bit of alcohol in that pan. And start pouring it in. Okay, so by putting the alcohol in the pan before I even pour the powder in, that helps to like condense the powder down as soon as it makes contact with the alcohol. I still have a little bit of alcohol here. So I'm gonna pour a little bit in. I'm just going to pour some more alcohol in here because I want to make sure all the product gets wet. Um, I don't want to risk having this still be a powdery mess. Alright, so what I'm going to do is set this one aside, same as the other one, and wait wait for them to dry down and before I repress them so I'll be back when it's time for me to really press them all right so I've let these dry out for a half an hour or so and I have this bathroom tissue I'll take about two squares and I don't know if you can see it but there's a crack forming in this shadow so I'm going to try to fix that by pressing it um, like I said these don't press very well and if they're a casualty they're a casualty I have like a million browns but anyway we're going to try to bring this back so I'm going to lay this over the shadow and I just use my fingers oh wow look at that 
I just start pressing. This is why you don't want to press when they're still really wet because you can actually press the shadow right out of the pan if you put too much pressure. But this way allows you to control how a product sits in there. But do you see that? It's not as intense on camera, but there is a pink base to this brown, Kenya, from the um, Nubian 2 palette, which is just crazy how they make eyeshadows. <laughs> Okay, um, as you can see, that pink dye sure leached onto my finger, but it pressed perfectly. So I'm gonna set it aside so that it can air dry. And it just took two layers of toilet paper and just pressing it. So it repressed well, we'll see in the long term how well it does, but we're just gonna follow the same procedure with this little guy. And I'm going to take another two layers of toilet paper because I don't know what color the base of that is. Um, yeah, my finger is pink now. I'm gonna do the same thing, lay it over here, lay it over the shadow, and just start trying to press that out evenly. This would be easier if you had a pressing tile. My plan is to buy a pressing tile from TKB Trading. Um, but until I do, this method kind of works just fine. And that, my friends, is the conclusion to our not so difficult um, odyssey pressing these Juvia's Place um, shadows. Pressing them, depotting them, repotting them. Um, here they are are in this magnetic palette you don't have to use a z palette i know some people are still um not too happy with the z palette um but anyway um if you wanted to save the artwork from this palette you could do that at this point i had no intention of saving it myself because i saved the packaging for these i'll show you um i knew that i love the artwork from these palettes when I bought them. So I actually kept all the boxes. So I have all of the pictures from the boxes. And these are from all of my um, Juvia's Place palettes. So here we go, the Nubian 2. And it's in really good condition because I kept the boxes in good condition and just cut them out. Here we got the Festival, the Warrior palette, which I gave to my grandmother, the Saharan, the Magic Mini, the Nubian 3 Coral, which I gave to my daughter, and then the Masquerade, which is probably the next one that I'm going to do pot. So if you want to see the process of depotting the Masquerade palette, which is basically the same as it was for the Nubian 2, then hit a thumbs up and um, or leave a one in the comments. And anyway, 
uh, just tell me if you want to see the depotting. I'm gonna be depotting a lot more stuff and um, I will sh share that with you guys. So anyway, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.